Oh my god! <laughs> What the fuck? Hello there, internet dwellers. Welcome back to another video. Today, I thought we could do some more Discord submissions from you guys. If you're not part of my Discord already, join it down below. If you've got something scary to send me, put it in the Scared Baz channel. If I react to it, I will give you a shout out. So today we have three videos and they're quite different from one another. So we've got a nice variety of videos here. The first one was sent in by Topsy Triceratops and it's called SCP-3000, The Colossal Eel hyper-realistic 3D animation. If you have thalassophobia, you might not want to watch this one because um, it's pretty... It, well, I guess it's thalassophobia mixed with megalophobia. Is that what it's called? The fear of big things. But well, we're going to jump into this, so thank you for the submission. This is by 3D Print Guy. Here we go. All creators will be linked down below in the order that I watch them, so please... Oh, I hate it so much. Just the thought of something so big being like down there. Like how big is the actual, like what's the depth of the actual ocean? Like what's the biggest depth? It's the Mariana Trench, is that what it's called? Or is that is, is that the deepest known? Because how big can something actually be? You know what I mean? Without like cluttering up all this space. I know there's there's a lot to work, but I feel like they just won't be able to move around that much. You know what I mean? It's like Jormungunder. From Norse mythology. In footage, it was found in the wreckage of an unidentified submarine near off the coast of India. The U.S. government denies any covert submarine activity in that location. Hmm. Okay. USS Mike McCombs check. USS this Mike is McCombs pretty freaking cool, man. We have no visual on you. Stand by. Underwater visual games confirmed. freak me the hell Roger out, man. Tacoma, be advised. It's just on the lack of, like, walk. being able to escape. Let me put the captions on. Radio silent. Understood. We will run. Oh, how no. Did you detect that audio? Can you confirm that that was a whale? Unknown. We're getting some tectonic plates. Imagine the sound Possible that this thing comes out with. Langley, we have visual on an unknown substance. Why is it smoking? Gas vent. Can you force correct? Oh, okay. We can't avoid sealing our ports and filter intakes as a precaution. Right. I don't know what any of it. Something is happening. Filters, they they aren't working. Stand ah. by. Langley, you're breaking formation. Respond. Langley, what are you doing, you silly goose? I, I, I mean, Tacoma. I, I, I don't know. I. Is he being lured towards this thing? It's so dark. Langley, respond. <laughs> That is literally Jormungunder. Mother of God. Mother of God. Holy shit. I like stuff like this. It's sweet. It's like just enough to like get you thinking and freak you out. No trace of the USS. It's a very unique style and I like this. Aquatic entity SCP-3000 has not been located. Not been located? Bro, have you seen the size of this thing? All you gotta do is just look down. It's scary though to think, imagine like there's some kind of Cthulhu-esque being at the bottom of the ocean. Oh my god, freaks me the hell out. Just like, I don't know, I guess that's why the whole like Lovecraftian monsters are so effective in horror because it just, it boggles the mind how something can be that big and just look that atrocious. And I guess it just, I don't know what it does. I don't know what it is, but it, it, it create it instills this primal fear inside of me when i see something like that and it's very effective that was awesome if you'd like to learn more on how i made this check out my two <laughs> he's such a nice guy hey if you want to check out how i made this all right i'm gonna like the video subscribe that was really freaking cool that was a very impressive animation so keep up the good work 3d print guy that was awesome man the second one is by a channel that we have watched before previously i love this channel i love what they're doing like analog horror wise they're called stylized kitsune and it's japanese urban legends and rituals volume four so we have watched the other volumes if you haven't watch them go watch them for yourself they're amazing this was submitted to me by sans on my discord so thank you for the submission i appreciate it we're just going to jump straight into this and see what kind of urban legends there are today by the way guys i'm not sponsored but this is the shit right here this is so good raw energy raspberry and blueberry they've got different flavors like orange and mango i think but it's it's rubicon rubicon are just mwah. 
I'm not sponsored. I'm just, I endorse this product. I endorse heart failure. I'm joking. I take that back. That was, I was joking. Oh, they're not doing their intro. Oh, that's a shame. How to open the demon's gate. The demon's gate is northeast and can, hang on. The demon's gate is the northeast and considered the direction from which demons come from and where negative energy is concentrated. This game can only be played in Tokyo. Well, because if you are not in Tokyo, you cannot continue. Because it's northeast, but if you are and shall play, proceed at your own risk. I love stuff like this. Requirements. 10 uncooked grains of rice. What? Entrance to Tokyo Metro. A burning desire, something you really want. How to play. Begin at any time. Go to Akihabara Station. Go to Hibia Line. Ride to Kayab... I'm so sorry. I'm going to be butchering all of this. Kayabacho Station. Kayaba Kayabacho. So is, is style are, are you from Japan? Because you seem to have a lot of information about stuff like this, or is it you just you just fascinated by their laws, their law, <laughs> their law? Arrive at Kayabacho Station. Go to the platform towards Hachobori. Hachio. No, stop it, Ryan. That's just racism. Look for a set of iron bars beneath there. You will find a small pile of salt. Kick the salt with your feet. It is unknown who places the pile of salt in the location. If you do not find any salt, do not attempt to continue. But what's the bet in that? So many people just go there to put salt down, just for the hell of it. Now go to, to Tozai Line, right to Takadano Baba. Gee, I'm so sorry, guys. Takadano Baba Station. You know what I like about this soundtrack? It's like it mixes the VHS sounds of like the in the background, but it kind of puts it on a beat so it sounds like it's actually music playing. It's really freaking cool. Arrive at Takadana Bala, <laughs> Baba Station. Go to platform towards Saibu Shinjuku. Again, look for a set of iron bars. Beneath there, you will find a small pile of salt. Again, kick the salt. Return to Tozai Line. Ride to Kayabacho Station. Again. Back at Kayabacho Station, exit through the ticket gate. My god, this is a whole ass instructional guide. Was this on an Airbnb experience? Come on, let's go summon a demon. Why not? Summon a demon in Tokyo today. Beneath the stairs, drop the 10 rice greens. Re-enter through the ticket gate. Now go to Hibiya Line, ride to Tsukiji Station. Tsukiji. Arrive at Tsukiji Station. Go to platform towards Tsukiji Honganji Temple. Look for the iron bars beneath there. You'll find a small pile of salt. Once again, kick the salt with your feet. Return to Hibiya Line. Get on the train. When the train starts moving, close your eyes. The destination doesn't matter. Clasp your hands together. Think about what you want most. Good luck. An anonymous user decided to test the game. Oh god. It's the end of the workday and I'm free, so I'm going to put 35 into practice for a little test. I'm really scared that there's salt. What kind of salt is this? Let me know. Was this like a vlog? <laughs> this was posted on 2chan. <laughs> it was our thing. In 2008-07-10, the next day a man was discovered dead in an empty pool of a house, despite the fact that he did not live there. Damn, man. Cocaine's one hell of a drug, guys. He was 500 meters away from the nearest train station. He opened the gates to oblivion. Oblivion! Lavender Town, Pokemon's hysteria-inducing experiment. It wouldn't be a surprise if someone were to guess which is one of Japan's most influential media franchise. Pokemon! In the 1990s, Japan had less strict regulatory norms regarding media, which gave companies an outlet for sensory experimentation. This gave birth to one of the Pokemon's one of Pokemon's darker incidents. 685 685 children fall ill nationwide. This is like Missingno. Remember Missingno? The Pokemon panic. The number of people taken to the hospital after what? Jesus Christ! How fast do these guys talk?
The number of people taken to the hospital after watching the animated program, Pocket Monsters, I guess that's what, on TV Tokyo Networks last night is now at 685. Is this real? We've confirmed that 208 of them have been admitted to the hospital. Oh my god, Pikachu looks mad. The popular cartoon Pokemon caused 600 children to fall ill. Everything turned white before my eyes. At first, it was the infamous Pokemon chapter that was broadcasted only once. Deno Senshi Porygon. 20 minutes into the episode, a scene involved extremely rapid red and blue flashes. This lasted about 6 seconds. Viewers reported blurred vision, headaches, dizziness, nausea, and in some cases, loss of consciousness. Oh my god. However, there's a preceding scandal that is even darker and more unsettling. Before the anime, Pokemon began as a video game called Red and Green for the Game Boy console. Is that true? I thought the, the animated thing came first. Or was it not? I, I guess not. With its release, the game quickly gained popularity among children. Within a short time, a thousand sales turned into a million. Damn. Soon, after, uh, soon, however, the red and green version of the game was immediately updated to red and blue. Those were probably the best versions of the games, right? That, that's absolute classic Pokemon right there. There is a disturbing reason behind this change. A location in the game... Oh, fucking don't do... Jesus, that scared the shit out of me. I don't know why. A location in the game was deliberately created to be different from the rest. Lavender Town was designed to unsettle players and the developers added specific audio-visual tweaks to achieve this effect. The problem began a few days later. Children started experiencing headaches, insomnia, nausea, and what's more chilling, nose bleeding. Is this true? This led to a massive investigation from health organizations that did not find any root causes behind the mysterious epidemic. At some point, reports of mass suicide cases began to appear among children aged 7 to 12. During their investigation, they discovered three truly bizarre similarities that all the affected children shared. They all owned a Game Boy game console. They all had the game Pokemon Red and Green. At least 80% of the affected children had a save file in Lavender Town. Ah. Oh. The sales for the game dropped immediately and Nintendo faced a storm of lawsuits. Nonetheless, they knew very well how to defend themselves. How? The Lavender Town Syndrome was caused by its sinister theme. The music contains extremely high frequencies that only children and young teens are susceptible to. This variation of frequencies can potentially trigger migraines in an adult listener. The music that's been playing in the background. Thanks, man. That's nice. The Pokemon company realized their experiment did not go well. The red and blue version of the game is nearly identical to the red and green version, with only one difference. The Lavender Town theme has been altered. Go on, let's, can, can we hear it? Oh, okay. So that was the original Lavender Town theme, was it? The Akiku doll. Dolls symbolize a connection between the material and spiritual worlds. They often serve as a means for spirit communication in various cultures. 1918. The story follows Kikuko, Kikuko Suzuki, a three-year-old girl who fell seriously ill, requiring months of bed rest due to a terminal illness. Okay, I'm editing this back and I have no idea why I thought it was a good idea to start beatboxing immediately after hearing a child had a terminal illness. What the hell is wrong with me? In response to the situation, her 17-year-old brother, Aikichi Suzuki, traveled to a nearby city to select the perfect gift for the young girl. Well, that's very nice of him. What did he get her? Among dozens of toys, the young man shows a beautiful porcelain doll about 40 centimeters. That's pretty big. She had shoulder length black hair and a traditional Japanese kimono. Her eyes also drew much attention. 40 centimeters, that's about... Oh yeah, it doesn't really compute on camera, but hang on, it's about... That's about 30 centimeters, so about... About that? 
Okay. I don't know why I'm doing this. The doll was named Akiku and was cared for like a sibling with her feeding and sleeping with it. Interesting. Tragedy struck next year when the little girl succumbed to her illness and passed away. So she, she possessed the doll. In line with Japanese tradition, the girl was cremated with her cherished belongings. However, they forgot Akiku and did not want to burn her afterwards. Hmm. The family decided to place the doll next to the little girl's ashes in the family altar they had set up in their home. Legend has it that everything seemed normal after the tragedy until the doll's hair started growing. Wasn't it like that statue? I forgot where I read this. It was a statue, right? I think it was in the Guinness Book of Records one year that I read. 2005, maybe. Where a statue, like, cried milk. The doll's black hair went past the line of her shoulder and in a few weeks reached her knees. Good lord. That's just horrible. In 1938, the Suzuki family left Hokkaido and emigrated, leaving monks from the Menenji Temple in charge of the doll. When the doll first appeared, it had black cropped hair, but as time went by, it grew and grew. The Akiku doll's hair is said to be as long as 25 centimeters, 10 inches. The hair is periodically trimmed. It reportedly grows back. That's nice, man. Real life dolls. Scientists analyzed a hair sample and supposedly determined that it belongs to a young boy or girl. Akiku has been residing at the temple ever since and people often come to see its legendary human hair for themselves. That's crazy. Why is that? If you're ever in Hokkaido, Hokkaido Island, Japan, and would like to see the haunted doll by yourself, head to Menenji Temple to meet Akiku. So that's a, so all of these are real things or real le legends, real stuff. Because it possesses a soul, it appears to dislike being photographed. That's why visitors aren't allowed to photograph it. So what about the person who took this photograph? Were they, did they die? Nice. I love your videos, Stylized Kitsune. It just gives me about, you know, usually what, what is it? Like 9 to 12 minutes of just imagining the unimaginable. And I like that. I think that's why... A lot of people kind of like, you know, uh, murder documentaries and stuff because it fascinates them to think on how evil a person can be, I guess, maybe, or how far they're willing to go. Uh, it's, it's just that curiosity that we have in our brains that keeps us going. And I think you capture it perfectly and it keeps me retained all the way through. So keep up the good work, man. You're doing a fantastic job. Guys, be sure to go subscribe to Stylized Kitsune, like the video, all that good stuff. The last video was actually, it's, it's been submitted a few times actually, but uh, it was submitted this time by King of the Dead on my Discord, and this is called Forest God by Chuvaback. Now I went through the comments and realized immediately that Meat Canyon said that this was so good. Now, if you know Meat Can, if Meat Canyon says it's good, you know that it's going to be good. Interesting for, uh, fact, actually, Meat Canyon. One of Meat Canyon's videos was the reason I got a community guideline strike one time, which was so strange because the video's still up, but my video was taken down. Uh, the community guideline strike was something about sexual nature because it was the freaking Space Jam video that I watched, where like LeBron James wants you to put his hands on. I don't know. I don't know what the hell it was. But yeah, that, that got me community guideline striked, which is crazy. But anyway, this is called Forest God. We're going to jump straight into this. It's only oh, just over a minute long, or a minute and a half long. So I've been told it's good. Now, I'm not sure if this is like CGI rendered or if it's like Pat... Yeah, this is CGI rendered, right? If this is... If everything we're seeing here is 3D rendered or CGI, then this looks amazing. But I, I feel like it might be live footage mixed with... What the fuck? Bro, why would you go anywhere near that thing? Unless you, you're trying to get that demon ussy. <laughs> What's wrong with you, Ryan? You're nearly 30 years old. 
Okay, is this CG? This is all CGI. Oh, I think you're dead, little deer. Oh, that's a shame. This is so fucking cool, man. Imagine a game like this. Soon, like, a well, virtual reality game. It's hard to kind of... Is that... What is that, a cave? Oh, hell no. You're all good. Oh! Oh, I hate it. It's fucking vile. I hate it, but I love it at the same time. Like, this is really well done. Oh, my God! <laughs> what the fuck? It's Mr. X. Jesus. Fuck, that was so cool. That's just enough to keep you going like, what the hell is going on here? But it wasn't long enough where you kind of got bored of it. It just le left you kind of thinking, what the fuck just happened there? Left it open-ended. I like that. That's really cool. And it looked like that freaking demon creature, whatever the hell it was. It was like, what, like a zombie Mr. X. Look at that thing. Let's go back. Look at that thing. It's like a human. They called it Forest God. There we go, guys. I'm going to like this. That was today's video. So be sure to check out all of the creators down below. They're very, very, very talented. All of them. Um, in their own ways, in their own unique ways. Yeah, this was this was amazing. So if you enjoyed my reaction, why not leave a like, rate, and subscribe, all that good stuff. I hope you guys did enjoy. Thank you for all the support lately. It's been amazing. And I will see you guys in the next video. Take care, guys.